wait a second. Why is the camera set up? Why is it recording? I forgot. I gotta do an intro. Ow. Oh. Hold on, don't go anywhere. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I got something. What do you call prehistoric barbecue? Jurassic pork. <laughs> I wanna wait, 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 wait. What do you call a dinosaur that's been in a car accident? Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. What do you call? What's up, everybody? My name is Scott, and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. And today we have another episode of When Guns Go Boom. We've tested out a lot of different firearms on when guns go boom, and we've collected a lot of valuable data. But one firearm we have not tested yet is the old reliable 1911. The 1911 has been around for over a hundred years and is tried and true. Two world wars. <laughs> Smells like freedom. The 1911 is a hardy design. It has a metal frame and a metal slide, and it's chambered in 45 ACP. And I carry 45, cause it don't make a 46. Oh. Oh. Oh no, I done missed one. ACP. It only takes one. All jokes aside, I really do like the 1911. It's an American classic and an absolutely beautiful design. And today we are going to put the 1911 through the Kentucky torture test. Nothing has survived yet except me. So this is a Smith & Wesson 1911 and it is very pretty. And this is an Ivor Johnson zombified 1911, and I can't say the same about it. It kind of looks like a giant booger. So now I have a dilemma. I have two 1911s, and I'm not really sure which one we should test. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna flip a coin. If it's heads, we're going with the Smith & Wesson, and if it's tails, we're going with the Ivor Johnson booger 1911. All right, that's that. Looks like we're going with the Ivor Johnson. You know what's worse than having a catastrophic failure with your 1911? Spammers, robocallers, and telemarketers. Eh, well, they're not that bad, but they're still pretty bad. But have no fear because Aura is here. Anyone can find anything on the internet, including your personal information. I mean, even this guy could find it. Stop stealing everybody's identities! <laughs> Aura will identify data brokers exposing your information and will automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They'll also opt you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. If you swing over to Aura.com forward slash Kentucky, you can start your free two-week trial and see how many data brokers are exposing your information on the web. You can also find this link in the description down below or you can scan my QR code. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats you can't see. It's really easy to set up so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. You get everything at one affordable price. Stop letting people exploit and profit off of your private information. Swing over to Aura.com forward slash Kentucky and start your free two week trial today. I love doing these ads because I just get to be unnecessarily destructive. <laughs> you can also find this link in the description down below or you can scan my QR code. A big thank you to Aura for sponsoring today's video and giving me a reason to throw stuff around. Now, let's go get to it. All right, it's time to get this thing set up. The normal operating pressures for a 1911 are around 40,000 PSI. This little guy right here is gonna be producing upwards of 250,000 PSI. That's so spicy, me the ball! So I'm gonna get it locked up here in our vice grip. I wanna make sure I put a nice cloth in here though, because 
I don't want to mess up my grips. So the goal today is to see what would happen to the operator of a 1911 if it were to have a catastrophic failure. So our test subject today is a ballistic dummy lab zombie bus and we have some hands. And around our test site here, we have a ton of cinder blocks. And then on the top, I'm gonna put this piece of leg sand. Okay, we are all set up and ready to go. All we have to do now is pull back that hammer. There is a string attached to the trigger and I'm gonna go hide behind my engine block. You will notice that the zombie kind of has an advanced grip on the 1911. His fingers don't move so well, so I just kind of laid the left hand on there. Okay, this is when it all goes to crap. If you are not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Like, like now, like do it now or I'm not gonna pull the string. Okie dokie, here we go. Okay, we have some smoke and oh my gosh, okay, um, <laughs> this is interesting, I've never seen this before. We uh, had something blow through this cinder block, like if you look right here, um, we have some damage and boy are our hands damaged, look at that. Oh, yeah, that's broken, yeah, your finger. Oh, your finger's not supposed to do that. What about the other hand that was laying on the other side? Oh, oh, all right. Well, if you had a catastrophic failure with a 1911, I'm gonna say you were gonna be missing some digits. The gun itself, yeah, we're missing a big part of it. Um, if you look from this angle, you can see that we're missing quite a bit of the 1911. Okay, I reviewed the slow-mo footage and it looks like if you had a catastrophic failure with a 1911, you're probably not gonna have any fingers left. Clear a few of these off here. How high I can throw this thing. Some pretty low quality cinder blocks. They're almost there. What the heck? Where do we get these cinder blocks from? The Dollar General? What the heck? <laughs> I've got everything cleared off the table. Our microfiber rag is blown to pieces. I mean, just holes blown through it. You can see here that pretty much everything went downward. That is absolutely insane that barrel is thrashed and so is the slide and the frame and i believe pretty much all of it went into the hands uh and the slow-mo footage you can literally see like the pinky just dangling around this one is extra fried i mean if this is original this is extra crispy i mean oh my gosh <laughs> you can see the bone so for the cinder blocks, one of them was pretty damaged 
And that's because the end of the barrel shot off and then hit the cinder block and then bounced back on the table. I found a piece of the spring and the other piece of it is inside this. I'm pretty sure this is called the reserve plug. If I'm wrong, I'm sure you will correct me in the comments section. Um, but yeah, this is still holding our spring. It's pinched off. Then we have several other pieces that I've recovered. Mr. Zombie here, he still looks just as handsome as he did before, but it doesn't really matter because now he don't have no hands. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. Does our hammer still work? Oh, nope, it does not work anymore. Oh wait, we're out of battery. <laughs> that worked. We have some very sharp edges, but I really wanna take a closer look at this barrel because that is just nasty. Now that I have this completely taken apart, we can have a closer look at it. As for our frame, we are missing the front portion, but the trigger and the hammer still work. The barrel is completely destroyed. And you can see that most of the spicy meatball was in this area right here. And then as for the slide, it's pretty much the same thing. You can see that this is completely blown outwards and the barrel had pretty much become one with the slide. So I think it's safe to say that if a 1911 had a catastrophic failure, it would not take you very long to figure that out. What other firearms would you like to see me test on when guns go boom? Let me know in the comment section down below. So you're chopping wood and you're trying to watch YouTube at the same time. Probably not a good idea. Oh. enjoyed it if you did do me a big favor and give it a like and if you're not subscribed to kentucky ballistics do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button i got today's table but you all thought i forgot in the last video to destroy the table it's not going to get out of it that easy also be sure and check me out on kentucky ballistics breakdowns kentucky customs kentucky ballistics shorts Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and X. Links to all those can be found in the description down below, along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com, just in case you want to pick up a shirt. As always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics. And I'll see you next time.